An important piece of information recently confirmed from within Tesla has quickly drawn the attention of both the technology and financial sectors. Elon Musk has announced that after February 14th, Tesla will discontinue the one-time purchase option for its full self-driving package. This is not merely a change in sales policy. It is a sign that Tesla may be preparing for a strategic shift far more profound than what the market can see on the surface. Based on videos circulating from recent testing phases, we can clearly identify 22 specific design changes to the Tesla CyberCab when comparing the 2024 concept version with the 2026 production intent model. For those who have followed Tesla's autonomous driving journey over many years, this move feels like a crucial final piece being put into place. For us, however, it points to a larger question. How much sooner could the Tesla RoboTaxi CyberCab be launched? Let us take a deeper look. For many years, Tesla has offered FSD as an optional software package across its vehicle lineup. The system enables cars to drive themselves in most traffic scenarios, from exiting a parking space and navigating city streets, to merging onto highways and even searching for a parking spot. In practice, videos showcasing real-world FSD experiences have spread widely across YouTube and Instagram, creating the impression that drivers no longer need to drive in the traditional sense. In the United States and several other markets, FSD is already capable of operating at a very high level of automation, even though, from a legal standpoint, the driver is still required to remain attentive and supervise the system at all times. Tesla has spent years training this system, collecting real-world data from millions of vehicles, continuously updating its software, and fixing issues as they arise. Elon Musk is also well known for setting highly ambitious timelines that are frequently delayed. Even so, at this point, even the most skeptical observers must acknowledge that the quality of FSD has advanced remarkably close to a level suitable for large-scale deployment. Before the recent announcement, Tesla users had two ways to access FSD. The first option was to purchase the package outright for a one-time fee of approximately $8,000. Looking back at the pricing history of FSD, when it was first introduced, we do not recall the exact initial price but it was somewhere in the range of $10,000 to $12,000, most likely around $10,000. In previous videos, many viewers helped us confirm this, but as of now, we have not had the chance to verify it precisely. If we are mistaken, please feel free to correct us in the comments. Thank you very much. The second option was a monthly subscription priced at roughly $99. This fee has actually decreased significantly compared to earlier periods. While pricing has been adjusted at different times, it has never exceeded 100 US dollars, and it was revised multiple times before settling at the current level. Only once the software reached a higher level of stability did Tesla officially introduce the subscription model. Once this boundary is crossed, the economic value of the vehicle changes entirely. A car that still requires human supervision is, at its core, merely a driver assistance tool, similar to autopilot in aviation, where pilots are still legally required to be present. A vehicle that does not require a driver, however, is a fundamentally different entity. It can operate independently, continuously, and generate revenue. Imagine a Tesla priced at around $40,000 that can operate autonomously as a robo-taxi. It could pick up passengers, deliver goods, and participate in ride-hailing or logistics platforms without the owner's presence. In that scenario, valuation is no longer centered on the vehicle's purchase price or the cost of software. The real question becomes, how much money can that vehicle generate over its usable lifetime? If the potential annual revenue reaches tens of thousands of dollars or even more, then pricing FSD at only a few thousand dollars is clearly misaligned with its true value. For this reason, a subscription model makes far more sense than a one-time purchase. If Tesla were to set a very high fixed price for unsupervised FSD, say $50,000 US dollars or even $100,000 US dollars, most individual consumers would be effectively priced out. At that point, only large corporations or investment funds would be able to purchase and operate fleets at scale. A subscription model broadens access while allowing Tesla to adjust pricing over time in line with the real-world value the system delivers. This strategy is also closely tied to Tesla's ambition to build a robo-taxi network based on vehicles owned by its customers. 
Rather than relying on a traditional taxi model with high barriers to entry, Tesla could allow any vehicle with qualifying hardware to participate in the network. Vehicle owners would share trip revenue with Tesla, while the company benefits from a massive fleet without having to fund the entire upfront capital investment. This is the fastest and most efficient path to scale. However, this decision also raises several sensitive issues, particularly for customers who previously paid up front for FSD. For vehicles equipped with newer hardware, Tesla will likely need to guarantee long-term access in some form. If unsupervised FSD is ultimately deployed, those who paid $8,000 are clearly holding a significant advantage. Conversely, for older hardware platforms, where customers often paid the highest prices, Tesla is almost compelled to offer some form of compensation, such as allowing FSD to be transferred to a new vehicle in order to maintain the trust of its early adopters. So, what are the 22 improvements in the 2026 Tesla RoboTaxi CyberCab? When Tesla first revealed the CyberCab in 2024, the reaction from many observers was not excitement, but doubt. Sharp edges, dramatic butterfly doors, a stripped-down interior, and the complete absence of a steering wheel or pedals made it feel distant from the realities of manufacturing, regulation, and daily use. For anyone who has watched the auto industry for decades, the CyberCab looked like another bold promise that might never survive contact with the real world. That initial skepticism is important because it frames what has happened since. Over the past year, Tesla has quietly but decisively reshaped the CyberCab, moving it away from theatrical futurism and towards something far more difficult to achieve, a vehicle clearly designed for mass production. The changes are not cosmetic, and they are not random. They follow a consistent logic that suggests Tesla is no longer experimenting, but preparing. The most obvious shift appears on the exterior. The original cyber cabs, sharp lines, and aggressive geometry have been softened across the entire body. The rear, once boxy and abrupt, is now rounded into a teardrop-like form similar to the Model Y, improving aerodynamics and reducing energy consumption. Side creases that once emphasized style over safety have been eliminated, replaced with smoother surfaces that better align with crash regulations and pedestrian impact standards. These are the kinds of changes that rarely excite design enthusiasts, but they matter enormously when a vehicle must pass certification in multiple jurisdictions. The trunk area tells a similar story. What was once narrow and visually striking has been widened slightly and reinforced with more durable lining materials, stronger struts, and functional ventilation. This is not designed for a showroom reveal. It is designed for repeated daily use, loading, unloading, and long service life in a shared mobility fleet. The butterfly doors, one of the most controversial elements of the original concept, have also undergone significant refinement. The lower edges are now rounded to reduce injury risk. The hinges have been repositioned rearward and extended, improving ease of entry and exit, particularly for older passengers. Frameless glass has been better integrated, and the overall geometry now reflects the realities of regulatory approval. Lessons Tesla learned the hard way with the Cybertruck outside the United States. Even smaller details reinforce the same conclusion. The single windshield wiper has become two. The tires are thicker. The wheel covers have been redesigned. The front light bar now integrates the headlights in a more conventional, compliant way. None of these changes are dramatic on their own, but together they signal something important. Tesla is no longer designing a concept. It is finalizing a product. That same transition is evident inside the cabin. The original cyber cab interior was minimal to the point of abstraction, featuring thin seats, hard plastic surfaces, and little concern for comfort or longevity. That approach may work for a stage presentation, but it fails in a public robo-taxi expected to carry dozens of passengers every day. The current interior reflects a different set of priorities. Seats are now flatter, more padded, and designed for easy cleaning or replacement. Materials emphasize durability over visual purity. A central USB-C charging hub has been added, along with ambient lighting integrated into the doors. The dashboard features horizontal ventilation, and a recessed 21-inch display, protecting it from damage rather than showcasing it. The headliner has been pushed back to align with the frameless windows, improving both visibility and perceived space. Door handles are more intuitive. Legroom has been slightly increased. Even the decision to add carpeting, despite obvious cleaning challenges, signals a shift toward passenger comfort and perceived quality. 
Crucially, many of these interior decisions align with lessons Tesla has learned from real-world robo-taxi testing using modified Model Y vehicles. For example, window travel is now limited to partial lowering, a direct response to safety concerns involving pets and unattended passengers. This is not speculative design. It is iterative engineering informed by data. Design changes alone, however, would not be enough to silence skepticism. What strengthens Tesla's case is the growing body of physical evidence that the cybercab is already operating in the real world. Since December 20, 25, production-ready vehicles have been displayed at Tesla's Santana Row showroom in San Jose. More importantly, cybercabs have been driving on public roads. By late 2025, roughly 20 vehicles were operating in Austin and Fremont, some without steering wheels. By January 2026, the test fleet expanded further, with vehicles running routes across Austin and the Bay Area, including high-speed segments on Mopac. Winter testing has taken place in Buffalo, New York, and at least 16 vehicles have already undergone crash testing at Giga, Texas, with full airbag deployment. These are not symbolic gestures. They are expensive, irreversible steps that companies take only when a design is effectively locked. Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla is already testing the CyberCab's production system itself. Volume production is scheduled to begin in April 2026 at Giga, Texas, using the company's unboxed manufacturing process. Tesla claims a cycle time of approximately 10 seconds per vehicle, translating to a potential annual output of 2 to 3 million units. The CyberCab will use Tesla's 4680 Gen 2 battery cells and rely entirely on vision-based full self-driving, avoiding the cost and complexity of LiDAR-heavy competitors. When the 2026 CyberCab is compared directly to its 2024 concept ancestor, the difference is unmistakable. Sharp edges have given way to rounded, compliant surfaces. A dramatic but impractical rear has become aerodynamically efficient. A sparse interior has evolved into a service-ready cabin. The vehicle is no longer a statement, it is a system. Leaks from late 2025, showroom displays, real-world testing, and a production timeline that appears to be holding all point to the same conclusion. The CyberCab's design is finalized, and its purpose is clear. Tesla is not asking the public to imagine what might be possible. It is asking them to watch what is already happening. Revenue projections and long-term impact can still be debated, and history teaches caution with ambitious forecasts. But one point now stands on firmer ground than it did a year ago. The CyberCab is no longer a concept waiting for validation. It is a vehicle being built, tested, and prepared for large-scale deployment. Why would Waymo fail if Tesla launches an upgraded Tesla RoboTaxi CyberCab? The core thesis of this entire analysis is straightforward. Tesla currently faces virtually no true competition in the robo-taxi space. Not because it is dramatically ahead in autonomous driving technology, but because it operates with a fundamentally different level of capital efficiency. In a market where capital efficiency ultimately determines the winner, Tesla holds a structural advantage that is difficult to replicate and sustainable over the long term. Recent research begins with a deceptively simple question that ultimately exposes Waymo's core weakness. If robo-taxis are truly a superior model, why has Waymo achieved only about 15-20% to 20 market share in San Francisco? After spending several days directly using Waymo's service, the research team concluded that the issue is not user experience or autonomous driving capability. Waymo performs very well on both fronts, but rather the underlying economics of its operating model. From a cost perspective, Waymo is not meaningfully cheaper than Uber. Vehicle depreciation costs for Waymo are approximately 0.90 US dollars per mile, while Uber's driver costs average around 1.40 US dollars per mile. Eliminating the driver therefore saves Waymo only about 50 to 60 cents per mile, far too small a margin to create a decisive competitive advantage. At the same time, Waymo bears enormous capital costs due to its extremely expensive vehicles, complex sensor stacks, and fully company-owned fleet. This leads to an economic paradox. Waymo cannot aggressively cut prices to gain market share because doing so would push it from break-even into substantial losses. Estimates suggest that if Waymo priced its service roughly 30% below Uber's rates, it could lose as much as 500 million U.S. dollars per year in San Francisco alone. As a result, 
Waymo is effectively stuck at an intermediate level of market share, large enough to demonstrate that the technology works, but unable to scale much further within a single city. The root cause lies in diminishing capital efficiency. A robo-taxi fleet must be built to handle peak demand, even though peak periods represent only a small fraction of the day. This means that for most of the time, a large number of vehicles sit idle, generating no revenue while still consuming capital. When Waymo operates at 10 to 15% market share, fleet utilization remains relatively efficient. But as it attempts to push market share higher within the same city, idle time increases and marginal capital efficiency deteriorates rapidly. For this reason, Waymo's most rational strategy is not to defeat Uber in San Francisco, but to expand into new cities where each vehicle can be utilized closer to its maximum potential. This explains why Waymo continues to roll out services in Los Angeles, Austin, and other markets, rather than fully dominating a single city as many once expected. In this context, Uber, despite having to pay drivers, retains a key advantage that traditional robotaxi models lack, real-time elastic supply. Uber can dynamically adjust pricing to pull drivers onto the platform or push them off, keeping vehicle supply closely aligned with demand. Vehicles that are not operating simply do not exist within the system, meaning no capital is sitting idle. This is why Uber remains resilient, even though robotaxis are theoretically the superior technology. Tesla is not forced to choose between the Uber model and the Waymo model because it can operate a unique hybrid approach. Tesla can own a base fleet, cyber cabs or company managed vehicles to serve steady, predictable demand at very high utilization rates. At the same time, during peak hours, Tesla can mobilize customer owned vehicles in the area to participate in the robo taxi network. This is a foundational advantage. In a city like San Francisco, research indicates that Tesla would need only one to 2% of vehicle owners to participate in order to meet peak demand. This means Tesla does not need to invest in a massive fleet that sits idle most of the time. Capital efficiency, as a result, is vastly superior. A direct comparison highlights just how large the gap is. To serve a market comparable in size to Uber and Lyft in San Francisco, Waymo would need approximately 10,000 vehicles, requiring around 700 million U.S. dollars in capital investment, assuming 70,000 U.S. dollars per vehicle. Tesla, by contrast, would need roughly 5,000 company-owned vehicles plus 5,000 customer-owned vehicles. Total capital investment for Tesla under this scenario would be only about 100 million U.S. dollars. In other words, Waymo would require roughly seven times more capital to achieve the same scale. Tesla is the only Western automaker capable of producing vehicles at low cost, high speed, and with such deep vertical integration. Tesla does not have to share margins with third-party manufacturers. If Tesla continues to rely on a vision-based sensor approach while Waymo remains dependent on expensive lighter systems, so does Tesla's shift to an FSD subscription model truly democratize access to robo-taxis? Or is it primarily a strategy to maximize long-term revenue from individual owners? Please share your opinion in the comments section below this video. Thanks for watching our video. Subscribe now so you don't miss the next breaking Tesla update. It's coming in just two days. If you want to explore more exciting information about Tesla EV or Tesla Bot, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss our latest videos. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.